The Miser by Mona Van Dyne I was out last night, the very picture of a sneak, dark and hunched over, breaking and entering again. Why do I do it? And why, when I can afford serious residences, do I keep to this one room? Perhaps if I had not lost track of the difference between the real and the ideal, it would never have happened. I hide here almost entirely now. When I go out, when I creep into those silent houses, I steal newspapers. An armload, no more than I can carry comfortably. Sometimes they're tied up on the side porch or by the kitchen stove. Nobody misses them. They think each other or the maid has carried them out to the street. They say there's something intractable out there. The law, the right to privacy, the world. In the days when my obsession was only a wound-up toy squeaking and jabbering in my chest, I could have believed them. I sit by the window today. There's very little space left now, though I have left corridors wide enough to walk through so I won't lose touch, holding my latest on my lap, handling them, fondling them, taking in every column. They are becoming more and more precious. My delusion grows and spreads. Lately, it seems to me, as I read of murderers, wars, bankruptcies, jackpot winnings, the news is written in that perfect style of someone speaking to the one who knows and loves him. Long before they miss me, I think the room will be perfectly solid. When they break in the door and unsurprised, hardened to the most bizarre vagaries, begin to carry out my treasure, death's what they'll look for underneath it all. Those fluent, muscled, imaginative men, sweating in their innocent coveralls. But I will be out in broad daylight by then, answering, having accepted utterly the heart's conditions. Tell them I wish them well, always, that I've been happy.